Hello everyone, this is Mr. Antonucci here, ready to start Unit 4 with our introduction to the American Revolution. We'll be speaking about how the relationship between the colonies and the mother country start to go awry, where tensions start to build. Now, if you remember, the colonists are pretty happy being British, but a revolution is going to take place. And anytime we talk about revolution, we are talking about change. So we've heard the term American Revolution, Industrial Revolution. These all indicate a change. But what I want my gangsters of knowledge to know in my class is that when we study history, that the word revolution refers to a movement often violent to overthrow an old regime or government like the English monarchy. But what are the reasons for this? Because again, um, the mother country and the colonies have a fairly decent relationship. The colonists enjoy being British. They um, enjoy their customs, um, the way they dress, their literature, their foods. And so we are going to explore the reasons why the tensions start to build between the colonists and the British. And it really starts with this. You remember this lady representing the mother country, buying raw goods very cheaply and selling finished products back to the colonists. So this is the first real um, tension we have between the colonists and the British. But it's not enough for the colonists to want to leave the mother country and give up the monarchy and being proud British subjects. It's going to be a little bit more involved than just that. So we need to explore what is going on with the colonies that they get to the point where they will despise the king and being British subjects, no longer wanting to be part of the mother country. And they'll start calling King George a bully. Um, king George is quoted as saying, I wish nothing but good. Therefore, Everyone who does not agree with me is a traitor and a scoundrel. The British will put a tax on tea. George Washington versus King George. We'll see the revolution from both sides. But let's hear from King George. Um, why is he so upset with um, the colonists? And what is going on that are making the British upset with the colonists? So the mother country? It's not really paying attention too much to the colonies at first, but that will change. And it will change after we study the French and Indian War. But again, let's hear from King George. You say the price of my love's not a price that you're willing to pay. You cry in your tea which you hurl in the sea when you see me go by. Why so sad? Remember we made an arrangement when you went away. Now you're making me mad. Remember despite our estrangement, I'm your man. You'll be back. Soon you'll see, you'll remember you belong to me. You'll be back, time will tell. You'll remember that I served you well. Oceans rise, empires fall. We have seen each other through it all. And when push comes to shove, Battalion to remind you of my love. Da 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 Cause you're my favorite subject My sweet, submissive subject My loyal, royal subject Forever and ever And ever and ever and ever You'll be back 
like before. I will fight the fight and win the war for your love, for your praise. And I'll love you till my dying days. When you're gone, I'll go mad. So don't throw away this thing we had. Cause when push comes to shove, I will kill your friends and family to remind you of my love. Da 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 King George has some pretty strong feelings about the colonists, and it all starts with this French and Indian War, also known as the Seven Years' War, but we're studying American history, and it's always referred to as the French and Indian War, not the Seven Years' War. And this is going to put us on the path to find out how this relationship between the mother country and the colonists starts to fray. We'll look at the boundaries before the French and Indian War and after, because this is really critical for our understanding of U.S. history. We also will see a young military officer named George Washington go to Fort Duquesne near Fort Pitt and be at the forefront and the beginning of this major historical war. So here's our French Indian War timeline. And we will be going through this um, later on in this class. But let's take a look at a film clip um, from The Last of the Mohegans. It's based on the French and Indian War, the novel, Last of the Mohegans. And what it points out is the antiquated or old-fashioned way the British fought wars. They like to stand um, in battle formation. And fighting the French and Indian War, this was suicide for the British. Amazing that they won. Look at how the British and Redcoats stand out and the Native Americans, the Indians, are ambushing them. This was called Guerrilla War. And you'll see that the colonists are going to learn a very important lesson about fighting a battle in the colonies. So they get the American Revolution. They don't fight like the British did. And the lessons that we learn in the French and Indian War, right here, are going to pay dividends for the colonists when they do fight the British. So let's watch the scenes from this movie, The Last of the Weekends. And you'll see the colonists in this clip. They're not dressed in red coats. For the British, this is not the way to fight a war. This is uncivilized, according to the British. Now, The Last of Mohegans, uh, narrative of 1757, um, by James Fenimore Cooper, was a book I read when I was in middle school. Um, it's a shame that it's not given um, in class anymore, but it's an excellent book. And this is where it leads us to the road to revolution. It all starts with the French and Indian War. And I would hope that you folks will do the um, assignment, which is about the French and Indian War. I have put a worksheet up on our Google Classroom. And so please complete that assignment and read the pages in our textbook. And I hope to see you and um, talk to you real soon. As always, contact me if you have any questions or concerns. And I hope to hear from some of you soon. So this is Mr. Antonucci signing out. and. Um, 
just want you to know that history matters.